How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Thursday here on this program. we got a lot to get into here today. Always news on Wrestling Observer Live. And obviously a lot coming out of AEW Dynamite last night. A lot of news coming out of that show. We're going to do the full AEW Dynamite report here on the program today. We have also got... A lot of news as WrestleMania is right around the corner. Next week, we got to Monday and Friday go-home shows for WrestleMania. Show airs April 2nd and April 3rd. And we have the full lineup here. And uh, there has been a change to the lineup of WrestleMania. So uh, hopefully you didn't buy a bunch of tickets wanting to see this uh, AJ Styles Edge match on night two. Because it ain't there anymore. So we will tell you about the current lineup for WrestleMania. As noted, MGF did an interview with uh, Ariel Helwani, which is uh, interesting for a lot of reasons. We'll talk about that here today on the show. And uh, we've also got NXT ratings from Tuesday night. This, of course, was the show featuring the finals of the Women's Dusty Yes, we have updates on Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal, and also an arrest of Conor McGregor. You know how these things go in mixed martial arts. We'll tell you about that. Paige Van Zant will be fighting again for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships, even though she is under a deal with AEW, which is actually one of the reasons she went to AEW and not WWE. WWE didn't want her getting punched in the face bare knuckle. They wanted an exclusive deal, and... AEW offered her a non-exclusive deal, allowing her to do that, so she's there. And uh, plenty more as well. Mike Semper Vivi joins us after the break. Stick around, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Well, let's get going. WWE's made a change. I thought plans didn't change. I thought this was a cop-out by people like me and Dave. WWE's made a change for WrestleMania. They now list AJ and Edge for night one. The match was originally announced for night two. After Edge issued an open challenge for everybody to face him, Styles stepped up, confirmed as Edge's WrestleMania opponent three weeks ago. Edge then turned heel and laid out Styles with two concertos. So uh, now here's a new uh, card. Hopefully you didn't buy tickets for night two and now you're mad. We got uh, Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. We got uh, Becky Lynch against Bianca Belair. We got Stone Cold Steve Austin on the KO Show. Edge and AJ Styles. Miz and Logan Paul versus Ray and Dominic. Uh, Drew versus Happy Corbin and Usos versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. And then for night two, we have Lesnar and Reigns, McAfee and Theory, Sami Zayn and Knoxville, the four-way women's tag, and the three-way men's tag. So by my calculations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches for night one, one, two, Two, three, four, five for night two. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And obviously we've got uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Cody Rhodes most likely. Looks like that would be night two. So you know what that would mean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on night one. One, two, three, four, five, six on night two. Hmm. You, th- you think a ricochet title defense is no? Of course not, you idiot! <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not saying. Okay, please don't report this. I'm not saying. Report that I, it. I'm not saying that that there's going to be a Kevin Owens Steve Austin match on night two. Okay, but I've been thinking for a long time that if Steve Austin is willing to do even a short match, I mean, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility at all. That that Stone Cold Steve Austin KO show appearance leads to a match on night two. I don't think it's impossible. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I have literally zero inside information on this. But just looking at that's on night one. We have way more match. They actually moved a match off night two to night one. So there's way. And listen, come on, everybody. I'm not saying that this is there. There may be another match they have planned. But the point is, let's look at this. How long do you think Lesnar Roman Reigns is going to go? 30 minutes? No. Unlikely. Yeah. How long do you think that women's four-way is going to go? Well, 15. They could. They could. 
I mean, Sammy and Knoxville are probably going to put in some smoke and mirrors time. I don't picture Austin Theory and Pat McAfee going an extended amount of time. I hope not. And then we've got the three-way tag match, which if it's in like an, a raw three-way tag, it's probably 16 minutes. So there's a lot of time left on night one, which obviously like most of that will be filled with video packages because we got to see these video packages. Recaps of night one, video packages for night two. But- oh, don't forget, they got to bring all the NIL kids out. Anybody that's been signed to an NIL deal, I wonder if they'll bring them all out on Smoke stage and too. mirrors, you dork. Not smoking mirrors. Every time I glance over that chat, I get angry. <laughs> Slime underscore Roy, smoking mirrors, really? Jiminy Christmas. So anyway, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but uh, that's that's the change to WrestleMania, and we'll see what that means. Then we got this. On an episode... Wait, hold on. Where do you put Omas? If you're going to do an Omas oh, who singles cares? match It'll be two anybody. minutes. It'll be three <laughs> minutes, four minutes. Are we even going to have a, an Andre Battle Royal? Is that no. going to be the pre-show? It does not look like there's going to be an Andre Battle. If there is a Battle Royal, it would be on the... the uh, like on the SmackDown or something on Friday. Well, it's I guess Ricochet is going to be the pre-show then. I would assume at least. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yes. On an episode of the Earl Hilwani show, MGF addressed rumors of WWE interest, bullying he received while in middle school, and the AEW departure of Cody. He said WWE's Bruce Pritchard is a particularly big fan of his. <laughs> Bruce Pr- Pritchard and me go way back, he said. When he was in MLW, he was one of the lead producers there, would watch me do promos. I mean, he was floored by me, absolutely enamored by me. I was the prettiest girl of the ball. I love Bruce. I think he's a hell of a guy, has a hell of a mind. I think he produces incredible television, he continued. <laughs> MJ was willing to answer any questions about whether WWE has reached... He was unwilling to answer any questions about whether they've reached out for him. But later confirmed, his AEW contract expires January 1, 2024. He said he will not consider re-signing with them earlier than that unless the money offered was absolutely astronomical. As far as how I've been reached out to, legally it's not smart for me to answer that question. But what I can say emphatically is that there is an absurd amount of interest in me, he said. He said he received interest from WWE prior to signing with AEW as well. I believe I was 22 at the time, he said. I knew there was serious interest in me in WWE. But again, I thought to myself, are they going to let me be me? That's my biggest thing. He spoke with Tony Khan at length about Mid-South, AWA, Buddy Landell, and Butch Reed, and realized the AEW president understood him. He continues to be a fan of WWE's product, however. I think they're doing great. I love everything WWE is doing. I just think we're fresh, and we have fresh faces that people haven't seen before. MGF said he is a fan of NXT as well. They had made a, out a competition this past Tuesday. Gripping competition. How how can you not like... Oh, they had a makeout competition this past tuesday how can you not like a makeout competition he said the story told on dynamite about experiencing bullying in school for being jewish was 110 percent the truth he was 11 at the time tried out for the middle school football team there was a lot of gentiles if you will on the football team he said i was one of only two jews on the entire team because jewish kids are supposed to be accountants doctors lawyers we're not supposed to steer away from that and try to do contact sports. I was in a weird position. At the time, the kids were not a fan of the Jew boy taking their spot. I was so stoked. I thought I was going to be able to make friends. And then all these kids rolled up on me, pun intended, with quarters, and they chucked them at me as hard as they could. MGF confirmed this happened on the same day that he saw CM Puck at an autograph signing at the mall. That was brought up in the build for the Revolution dog collar match. He was asked about Cody leaving AW for reportedly WWE and said he wishes Rhodes luck and that he hopes they both find happiness in a boatload of money. I respect what he's doing as a businessman. Quite frankly, by 2024, if people have an issue with me leaving to go make real money, then me and him are going to be fighting on the same exact island. He also confirmed he's actively seeking a break into movies and television as well. Talks about his age, and he's got voiceover work for an animated film that will be released next year. You know the greatest thing about being MJF? What's that? Well, his character is, is the most unlikable heel. And so this is like the greatest interview that you could possibly do. I love Bruce Pritchard. I love WWE programming. I'll go there if the money is right. Like, storyline-wise, pushing the buttons of the AEW fans, I mean, it's the greatest interview you can possibly do. And it's also all true. I don't know what MGF's going to do in 2024, okay? Here's the thing. Obviously, and I think that probably everybody, including MGF, because he said it right here, would agree. AEW is a better fit for him. Why? Because in AEW, he's going to be allowed to be him. 
he may still be, you know, they may rename him like Michael Jackson Fauntleroy or whatever when he goes to uh for to WWE. And he'll he'll largely, you know, be able to be his character. But um I'm not sure in WWE that you're going to get away with the line about how I'm going to I'm going to tie him to the cross like Jesus. What do you think about that? Nail him and up. uh you know, there's a lot of he says things in his promos that uh you know, they'll they'll let him say in AEW, but that ain't going to fly in WWE. Now, the thing with MJF is he's he's a fantastic promo. He could make it work in WWE. He doesn't need to do he if you take away some of those things he's allowed to say in AEW, it's not like now he's going to be a bad promo. He can still be a fantastic WWE promo, but he will be a WWE promo. He will not be an AEW promo, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, we have this prediction show. I don't know where this bloke's going to go. I don't know what he's going to do, but I know one thing. 2024, he's going to be a millionaire, one way or the other. So good for him. Hell yeah. It's the, the great thing about MJF, and that's some of the things when he does a lot of the tired and the cheap stuff, it's like, don't. Do some of your inventive stuff. Do some of your good stuff. I mean, in introducing Yiddish, I mean, some of the, in, in just his overall promo, I mean, he is fantastic, no matter what it is, so he can do everything. That's why people have been on him for so long, because he's just a natural for this business. He's a natural on the microphone, and he is fantastic, and I think that line, which we'll get to a little bit later on, that he ad-libbed, I think was very overblown. Megan Amo with more Observer Live. Um, anything else on MGF before we move on here? Mike? Not really, no. I mean, as far as what that promo goes, you know, I, there were three things last night that seemed to be really blown up because I didn't see the show till today. But there seemed to be three hot points out of the show last night, one of which was MJF referencing Jesus, obviously, and saying he was going to nail Wardlow to the cross, which was an ad lib. And he had just talked about like in, you know, during the promo and then, you know, it, w with Ariel there, you know, some of the things that have happened to him in the past and, you know, because of being Jewish. So then you get a Jesus chant. And he doesn't know that there's a guy dressed as Jesus there and you get this Jesus chant. And to me, the I'm going to nail Wardlow up like Jesus, it shut everybody up. It was not. It was, I guess, if you were very conservative or very Christian, maybe you took offense to that. But I didn't think it was beyond the pale at all. I would have thought later on in the show when Vicky Guerrero, how it was seemingly online and in our forum and on Twitter and places like that, I would have thought she cut a... Strom Thurmond, you know, I'm not sure who the most uh, anti-immigration senator is now, but like, I would have thought she would have done the whole ice card and everything else. And then I watch it and it's like, it was cheap. You could say it was old. You could say it was tired, but it was also very quick and it was a distraction to get Nyla Rose out to attack her. So it was like, I thought that was overblown as far as some of the reaction went. And then the other one was, oh God, what was the other thing that people were... Oh, the, the Sammy's Sammy skeeting on the belt was again how it was. I mean, I, I to me it, the stuff on Twitter that was that they post is a lot more. I would assume I, I say racy or controversial or whatever. A lot more than that line, which again you could say it was you know low rent. But to me, that wasn't as bad as him just coming out and going, let's have an, you know, uh, uh, you start an, an, an ass chant for the crowd where it's like that wasn't needed. Like Jade throwing the S word out. It's like to me, like that was more obnoxious than the line about Lambert where, you know, the heel <laughs> again, it was it was dirty, but I thought it was effective. It, you could say it was low rent and crass, but I thought it was effective. And I thought the pushback to those three things. Well, hey, listen, I got to say, I thought it was way, way overblown. Listen, everybody. Listen, I have no inside information. OK, I have no inside information, but I'm just going to ask you a question since this was brought up. So Thunder Rosa does an interview sometime in the last couple of days and mentions that she really did not like that angle where Brock Lesnar had the mariachi band and he he did that deal. She really didn't like that. And then 
on the very next television show, a heel comes out and says, you know, you're not even a real Mexican. You don't have a green card or whatever, whatever the line was. <laughs> you're telling me that like, you know what I'm saying? Just you're like this even... MJF interview. And the thing I mean, is, Brian... maybe, maybe she really, maybe it's, it's possible. She really thought that that was like a racist angle with Brock Lesnar. And then Tony Khan pre- presented her with this angle. And like, she was really furious, but, that... but what, what is the most, what is Occam's razor here? I don't know. But it's it seems to me like, you know, I, I watch some of these interviews and I hear what some of these people say in interviews and then all of a sudden there's stuff happening on television and it's like, uh, hmm, interesting. Hmm. It's almost like they're... Uh, Not Occam and Razor. <laughs> maybe working their interviews. <laughs> I don't know. It to be, again, it, it comes down to it's like you're not even from here. You're you're fake. This is my state. And it's like if they would have had a, a long drawn out battle where Vicky was just really going like 70s style wrestling racist and running Thunder Rose into the ground for like five minutes, I would have gotten it. But it was a distraction where Thunder was like, what is this B talking about? What women shut up? And it was just enough time for Nyla to come out and snuff her. So I, I to me, way over blown and everybody wham inside my feelings about it and look you can have all the opinion that you want but when you take it too far i yeah i don't know every again everybody's entitled to their own opinion but i think everybody's way way too deep in their feelings bags Spurs says i hated the green card line the entire thunder roses segment and nyla rose attack was infuriating to watch well there you go i wonder how many people though are just like sick of vicky and I hate to say that, but that's also part of that, too, is I wonder how many people really I don't that Vicky has go away heat with. As far as fans go. <laughs> Jacob here says, I am so disappointed by WWE's decision not to put Seth Rollins on WrestleMania this year. I had tickets <laughs> with my buddies. We were all so excited that it would have been our first Mania, but Rollins not being booked just ruined it for all of us. He's been our favorite for years, and we canceled our tickets to prove a point. Oh, that after man. decades of dedication, Seth Rollins deserves to be on WrestleMania. Uh, I wonder if Homie's going to make a pilgrimage now to the Black and Brave Academy instead of watching WrestleMania over two nights on the Peacock. First 75 minutes of Dynamite, this person says, was an all-timer. Punk Harwood, 8-Man Tornado Tag, MGF Promo, Blackpool Combat Club. What a great name. It is a great name. Lethal Cole, all were incredible. Show was heading to being entirely great, but that awful Vicky Thunder Roses segment and a below-average women's match dragged it down. Everything else was entertaining. Austin, Texas, also dope as a crowd. (laughs) What was that sign? There was a sign on, uh, and what was the guy's shirt on NXT? Something about dope. I can't remember. It's funny though. It's like a ridiculous I, I, shirt. Now, what if was it? Was it? Ba- Somebody had to have seen it. What was the line from uh, the WWF back in the day? It wasn't was no it? hope with dope. No, that's it. Else. <laughs> no hope for some of these dopes. That's for sure. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, last night, uh, very good dynamite. The women's segment were the weakest points of the show, including Sammy and Ty. Yeah, a lot of people don't like that Sammy Ty deal. <laughs> They got to be heels. They're dating I know they're and fil- they put them together on television. What is the problem? I know they are filling the blanks Who right cares? now I think, for, for Cody and Brandy in this feud. But with that, I mean, they are, they're so over the top. I don't know how you're not going to be able to keep them from being heels. I guess maybe if people just love them so much, but I have a feeling if it hasn't already started to turn, they are going to be remarkable heels. And I'll say this. If the gun club, I can absolutely see them joining up the way things are kind of moving right now with FTR and MJF. Those tea leaves seem to be there because the gun club with a new gimmick, put them in suits, be more serious. I I think that there's a time for them to have a gimmick change here away from being the ass boys. But with that said... (laughs) You know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing possibly maybe, you know, uh, some other people join the pinnacle, possibly. You know, the the thing to me, remember I used to read fables here on this show? Yes. Well, there's a famous story. It's called The Little the little Boy Who Cried Wolf. And I haven't read this story in a long time, but I think the gist of it is there's a little boy and he keeps crying about a wolf and all the townspeople come and there's obviously no wolf because he's making up a story. And then, uh, you know, one day he cries wolf, and there actually is a wolf, and no one shows up because they think he's full of it, and he gets eaten. That's the story, right? Yeah. Just a bit? If not, that's my version. So anyway, bro, there is so much 
you guys ever look at like the Wrestling Observer at the end of the year when they do the awards and it's like most uh, disgusting promotional tactic and there's a list that's like this long? It's like there's so much stuff in, in the wrestling business to get upset about that I see these people that they just get upset about everything. And after a while, it's like you're the you're the boy that cried wolf. Like Yes. That's exactly bro, what there's, it is. There's plenty of stuff to get mad about. You're mad that that uh Ty Conti and Sammy Guevara are a couple and they're together on TV as well. Why does this bother you? Exactly. There's plenty of horrible things in and around this business to actually get mad about. I, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, like, and look, you can say the storyline is whack or whatever, or that they are not representing AEW well with some of the pictures if you want to be that prudish about it. If you're that prudish about it, I don't know why you're watching pro wrestling. But, I mean, I just, I don't know. To me, it's it's ridiculous. But, again, to loop back around to what I was saying, and Ty and Sammy with MJF and Spears or something like that down the line, or Sammy having his own goons around him and just being obnoxious with his girl as heels, I don't know. I think they could pull it off really, really well. Eddie's saying, did you respect their privacy like they asked for? LOL. I don't know what what exactly Eddie's saying, but bro. And here's the thing. Hold on. Wait a second. If you're a couple on television, okay, you still have privacy rights as a couple off television. Damn right. Bro, what does one have to do with the other? If they don't want you invading their private life... They can still go on TV as a couple, and you can say whatever you want about them on TV as a couple. They're characters. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, oh, well, since they're a couple on television, now I got the right to do whatever to this this couple in their private life. Because, you know, their they're public life, they're a couple. What? What are you talking about, Eddie? I know. Look, and look, if this is an issue about Sammy and Ty and... Look, I don't know. I don't follow their socials that closely. So I only see things that get retweeted and stuff like that. And yes, I know, Sammy, that he said respect our privacy on Twitter. You still should respect their privacy. Yes. That's and different than their public characters on television. And if they're doing an act on a Twitter to draw more attention to the wrestling characters, okay, that's one thing. And you can debate, you know, crossing the line and all that. But whatever. But, like, still, I mean, stay out their damn business. The whole point of this was, and I, look, I, Sammy put his business out there with his woman. They did the thing. And they have put their business out there in some ways a lot. So, like... But that's separate from the wrestling aspect to me. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, if Sammy wants to, why do you need to get involved? Why do you care about who he's married to or who he's boning or any of that sort of stuff? People get so tied up and involved in other people's relationships in their lives. And it's like, unless somebody's being injured or abused or something like that, what do you care? Why are you so concerned? Why people are so concerned of what happens in people's bedrooms and people's relationships and all that? It's like, get one of your damn own and get out of everybody else's. Oh, wow. Hold on. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Ah. Let's talk about this Dynamite report. Then we got a Rampage lineup. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, the show opened up with a... Oh, we didn't even talk about Connor. Oh, God. We got to talk about Connor. No, we don't have to. CM Punk beat (laughs) Dax Harwood. Great match. CM Punk beat him. Anaconda Vice. Dax Harwood. Uh, they're clearly uh, going babyface here, which is very interesting, as we're going to find out later when we do the MGF promo. But uh, excellent, excellent match. CM Punk, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, everybody. I think he's a better worker now than he's ever been. Ooh. Yep. He was great in this match, and so was Dax. Excellent, excellent match. We had uh, Tornado Tag, Hardys, Darby Allen, Sting, Beat Private Party, Butcher, and Blade. Every crazy spot you could imagine. The big dive by Sting, the dive off the, the side of the building by Jeff Hardy through a table, Darby being thrown down a flight of stairs, every crazy thing you can think of. And then uh, Sting and Matt pinned uh, Private Party, double twist of fate, Scorpion Death Drop. Finish was a little wonky with Sting, but they, they made it work. And uh, this was this crowd was awesome, and they were super into these matches. Sting is awesome. Holy Moses. We had uh, Danielson and Moxley beating the Varsity Blondes. Just beat the goo out of them. It was awesome. And uh, afterwards, there was the promo by Moxley, where, in fact, they have named the group the Blackpool Combat Club, the greatest name that you can say without an FCC violation for these two men. 
<laughs> and uh, you need to bleed, you need to sweat, and you need to enjoy pain if you want to join their club. They should hold all the championships, just so y'all know. Wigan Snake Pit, right? MJF did a promo. I cannot help. I can't help but recall that I brought up that idea about how Wardlow was going to come out for that TNT title shot, and MGF was going to say, I'm going to release you from the contract, but you have a 90-day no-compete, so you can't have your match tonight. And for 90 days, the guy was not allowed to wrestle. He'd show up and do whatever. I was ridiculed. I was mocked. I was well, called a weren't. fool. You were? And then you know what happens? What happened? Well, MGF says, bro, I'm, I'm not letting you any contract. I'm going to pay you, but I'm paying you to sit at home, just like WWE does. You're going to sit at home, make your money, and you're going to rot in obscurity. And he cackles and laughs, and Wardlow shows up, and MGF runs down his family. Wardlow gets all furious. He gets dragged out by security. And then MGF, at the end of the thing, says, the pinnacle is not over. And starting next week with FTR, the pinnacle will move up in the world. And, of course, FTR are clearly turning babyface. So will the ass boys be joining the pinnacle? Or will that part kind of be a swerve and another team's going to show up and beat up all four guys? We'll have to, uh, we'll have to find out. But something's going down next week. This is a fantastic promo, by the way. Yes. We had uh, the best friends. Uh, they're no longer friends. with we He's a friend of me now, this Wheeler Yuta. Adam Cole beat Jay Lethal. Great match. It's Adam Cole and Jay Lethal, brother. What do you think you're going to get? So and Jay Lethal goes for the uh, lethal injection. Ref is distracted. Cole low blows him out of midair, pins him, and then cuts the promo. He wants another shot at Hangman Page, which he will be getting at some point down the road. Probably one of those uh, Battle of the Belts specials would be my guess. And uh, Hangman runs down, whips everybody with his belt. He gets jumped, laid out. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Christian Cage make the save. So we've got uh, Red Dragon uh, fighting for the tag team titles and uh, Cole versus Page all coming. And, and I might add, CM Punk did this thing. He wants a belt. But which one, they asked? We'll find out. Now stop right there, okay? Adam Page. And I know people, I don't want people to get all emotional about this. I like Hangman Page. I, I think they have made some missteps along the way with him. But all that aside, I, I really like him. I like him as the AEW champion. But for this only not only goes for him, but for anybody, especially in a position of power, if you're going to come out there with your belt, don't walk into the ring, stare at three guys, slowly take off your belt, then start whipping them. I, to me, I just, that's one of those little things. And I hopefully Lance doesn't yell at me for this. Hopefully he would agree with me for this, but like have the belt with you run out there and then start whipping ass and doing it that way. I thought that would have been more effective and then have him be dragged down. It would have been a more valiant attempt than just looking, I don't want to say kind of dumb, but it's kind of dumb to do something like that. I didn't mind it, it at is all. It not? And I'll tell you fair, why. Okay. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because there were three guys in the ring. And he starts running out of the ring. And even, I think it was even JR was like, he said something like, uh, he pointed out that this was probably pretty stupid to come out one against three. So if you're there with two of your buddies, Mike, and uh, you you call out one guy, and this guy comes out, you're not going to immediately just jump him. You're going to look at him like, look at this dummy. And the dummy got the in the ring and they looked at him like, could you possibly be this dumb? And then he looked down and he took off his belt and they were like, Oh, he's not that dumb. And then he started whipping him, so it actually worked. Well, see, until he got me, overwhelmed. Like, then you get the, the, the dumb heels that are just standing there watching him take off his belt. To me, it's like if you're going to run out there and put yourself in that kind of harm, like it, like the way Moxley would do it, I that's the way I would probably prefer, which is take it off. You're wrapping it around. You got that big ass Texas Virginia. Texas, Virginia, belt buckle on his hand, and then he slides in there and then starts to go, and then the numbers game drags him down again. It is a picking of the nits. No, but see, the- see, Buzz here makes a good point, Mike. If that guy takes off his belt and then runs down the aisle, his pants are going to fall down. Touche, Buzz. Thank you. Which actually reminds me. So I got a uh, two-year-old. She's two and a half now, Hanale. And, bro, she's tiny, okay? Because she's my kid, obviously. So she's so little. So Paisley, we had, uh, I don't think we, we potty trained her till she was almost three. And she was bigger than, than Hanalei. So uh, Hanalei had just turned two. 
And uh, we were going to go on that Disney cruise. And they had all these little pools and everything like that. And Hanalei was not allowed to go in any of the kids' pools unless she was potty trained. That was like the rule. You could not go in with swim diapers or whatever. So we're like, ah, man, well, let's just do it. And so she was like, I think she had just turned, she was two two years and like a month or two or something like that when we started. And uh, amazingly, it worked great. She was totally potty trained at uh, like 23 months or 24 months or something like that. It's cool. So, uh, but then, of course, we went on the cruise and she didn't want to do anything except breastfeed. <laughs> but the point is, it was done. Oh, boy. So, anyway, the point of this is she's so small that, like, her tiny little clothes, she wears like 18 month clothes. Well, how small is she? They fit, her 18, 18 to 24 month clothes fit if she's wearing a giant diaper. <laughs> well, now she's not in diapers. So she's got this tiny little, this little butt, uh, quite frankly, and so her none of her clothes fit, and so she's constantly running around the house like Hangman Page if he took his belt off, and she runs and her pants just fall down, and then she has to pull them up, and then she chases after her sister. She thinks she's Sonic the Hedgehog, and her pants fall down again. So anyway, leave that well, belt on, Hangman. Get old boy and your daughter some suspenders then too, in case they got to take your belt. Suspenders, because the taste never. Of the may need to take I'd rather she off. ran around with her at, her buttocks hanging out than put suspenders on that poor kid. You can only do that for so long though before somebody calls you. You know who does wear suspenders? Who does? Fauntleroy. Ah, we'll get to him in a minute. We had a uh, the Sammy Ty segment, which is uh, building up a match with, uh, I believe it will be Ethan Page and Page Van Zant. Page and Page will be facing Ty Conti and Sammy Guevara. Do we need to talk about this, or is everybody angry enough? Oh, they're angry enough. Then we had Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. I couldn't help but notice I went on my uh, my Twitter here. I want to read this this tweet because you know you know how my timeline is. So uh, this bloke here, where is it? It's a good one. Luckily, we got a lot of time. Uh, this person here, he just wrote. Uh, Something like, yeah, Brian Alvarez, not a big fan of Layla Hirsch and Red Velvet. Well, that's quite the leap, Travoris. Yeah, the match sucked. Doesn't mean I'm not a fan of either of them. Doesn't mean I think they suck. Doesn't mean I want to intrude on their private life. But no, they did not have a good match last night. Clunky, not a good match. Uh, Layla Hirsch cheated to win, hit her with a bar or something like that. And then uh, Chris Statlander ran down after the match and made the save. Uh, we'll do the AW Rampage lineup in a moment. Thunder Rosa promo where she was beat up by uh, um, Nyla Rose. That'll be the first feud for her. And then the main event, Jericho Appreciation Society. Jericho and Daniel Garcia versus John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Holy smokes, what a main event this was. This comeback by John Silver... And I, I don't want to downplay Alex Reynolds because they had a double-team deal at the end where they hit like nine moves in a row on poor Daniel Garcia. And he wasn't even... There was one spot where he was in the wrong spot and they still made it work. And this crowd just lost it at that. And then, of course, it was uh, not the finish. And um, finally there at the end, Garcia... Uh, Reynolds got hit with Floyd. Garcia put him in the Scorpion Death Lock, submitted him. Bro, that match was awesome. So uh, Jericho Appreciation Society gets to win there. This was a really, really good episode of, of uh, Dynamite. We'll see how it does in the ratings tonight. You know how these ratings are. No matter what it does, I'm going to have to hear about it. But I'm not going to open Twitter, so I won't hear about it. So go well, gonna, do whatever, nerds. I'm out of here. You're going to have to open I'm gonna Twitter. I'm going to go make a pizza. You're going to have to post it up there. Now, is that pizza going to have a cauliflower crust? No, I use uh, low-carb tortillas. It's even better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys ready for the, the Rampage spoilers? I got a surprise for you today. I might have, I might have talked Fauntleroy and actually being on camera. Fauntleroy. Oh. Now's the time. Bro, come what? here. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. I tried. I will get him on camera before all is said and done. I thought I had it today, but I can't waste anyone's time, especially people that are listening. All this dead air, not good for radio. Right, Dom? That was your big chance, Dom. Dom, we got dead air. I'm asking you about dead air. You're giving me dead air. All right, Fauntleroy. (laughs) Get on the other mic over there. Read these spoilers. First match, Dustin Rhodes versus Lance Archer. Second match, Alan Angels and Ten versus Red Dragon. 
Third match, Nyla Rose vs. Maddie Renkowski. Fourth match, Ricky Starks vs. Swerve Strickland for the FTW title. QT Marshall will also present Hook with a certificate of accomplishment in which nothing could possibly go Hey, Fauntleroy, stop! There's no editorializing! <laughs> Golly! It seemed like Fauntleroy had a harder time with Strickland than with Renkowski. All is... I know is he's done a lot better. He did way better this week than last week. Really? Yeah. Getting I stronger. helped him. I explained what a period was. <laughs> Can you? Never mind. Never mind. So there you go. That's the uh, lineup for Rampage coming up on Friday. I hope that crowd stayed hot, which is very difficult to do after a Rampage like that or after a Dynamite like that to, to stay hot for Rampage. But I, I hope that they do because, you know, that Swerve match, I'm ready. I, I'm hoping I'm hoping they get it right. WWE could not have gotten it. I don't want to say any more wrong with them because for a while NXT absolutely did get it right. But what they don't see that AEW, I believe, does, I hope they put them in a position Get something going, get him on Dynamite, and get him in the mix, because I think he can be a big star for them. Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal was absolutely and impeccably great. Two great professional wrestlers cannot praise them enough. Hey, listen, you know if you like wrestling, have I got the show for you? Because there's a lot of it on Rampage. Not letting Thunder Rosa get a word in one week after a big title win... And putting her on the defensive immediately was not the move to make. I don't like these lazy WWE tropes. <laughs> That's from a guy whose um, uh, email is Mazanin. <clears throat> Back in a moment, Observer Live! I actually should devote like a whole show to this Colby Covington thing. He will press charges against Jorge Masvidal in connection with an alleged assault Monday outside a Miami Beach, Florida restaurant. Masvidal arrested Wednesday night, charged with aggravated battery with a mask... And criminal mischief, released on $15,000 bond. According to Covington, 37-year-old Masvidal allegedly punched him twice while wearing a hooded sweatshirt and a mask over his face, fracturing a tooth, causing an abrasion on his wrist, in addition to $15,000 worth of damage to his $90,000 Rolex. Wait, he actually got that thing appraised that quickly? I don't know about that. Covington told police he identified Masvidal by his voice and hair sticking out from the hoodie. He identified him by his hair. It's unique. Masvidal and his agent then tweeted on social media shortly after the incident, indicating there was a conflict and that Covington had suffered some kind of injury to his teeth. Good thing you had that mask on, buddy. I like how you did a show your face challenge, Colby Covington did. You know, really the show your ass challenge for both of these guys. They have won that multiple times. Masvidal could face up to 15 years in prison for the battery charge if convicted. Formal charge is expected to be filed soon, followed by a court date. What would be crueler for Masvidal, getting any sort of jail time whatsoever for this or having a second fight with Colby where he loses again? Well, I also know that Connor was arrested and had his car seized on Tuesday due to dangerous driving. He was released after passing alcohol and drug tests, and his car was released back to him. So he was just driving like an idiot. There wasn't even, like, some, you know... Drug or alcohol related. Was it all proper 12 up? I don't know. But anyway, he was pulled over, arrested, charged with several offenses that eventually ended up being the dangerous driving charge, which comes with a possible six month prison term and or fines. My guess is it'll probably end up being fines because it's Connor. We're out of time. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.